Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me. I'm Anita from Yoga on the Road. Today, this tutorial is dedicated to an advanced pose, believe it or not. You are on the beginner channel with me offering an advanced pose. And it's not that I'm offering the complete shape or performance of the advanced pose is that I'm offering you stepping stones <clears throat> that make a, an advanced pose more accessible to you. So the thing that I have learned is we are not defined by what we can and what we cannot do, or we should not be defined by what we can and cannot do. So the ultimate attainment of a pose is not the be all and end all. But if you're armed with little steps that are a component of that broader pose, <clears throat> then you're armed with those steps. Same as in life, if you're armed with coping strategies or things that support you when things don't go right, this is all what it's about. So today we are looking at a pose called Lolasana or dangling pose. And I always find it hilarious that I teach these advanced poses that I cannot quite perform myself. I've got a good structure of it, but for me the importance or the biggest takeaway is playfulness. Learning how to play and learning how to take little bits away from it that um, you can have fun exploring as a single pose if you want. So it's quite prop heavy today. Set yourself up with a couple of blocks, um, a blanket roll, which we will use later on. And I think that's pretty much out, up us for now. So grab all those things, set yourself up. <clears throat> Before we go anywhere, we'll check in with our breath. Our breath is what is ultimately going to guide us. So place one hand on the belly, one hand on the chest. If you feel comfortable to, close down your eyes. And just start to notice the natural rise and fall of your breath. The place that the breath dwells. The space that the breath fills. The way that the breath supports you. On your next inhale, have a feeling of sending the breath all the way down deep towards the belly comfortably. And as you exhale, empty the air. Take a deep and full breath in through your nose. and a deep and full and longer breath out through the nose. Breathing deeply. Breathe out fully yet slowly, really slowing the pace of your exhale right down. Take a few more breaths to your own rhythm, finding the comfort that the breath gives you. And know that you can call on this breath at any time throughout your practice today. Take one last cycle of breath. And here you might like to exhale audibly, releasing any tension with your last breath. Gently release the hands, open your eyes. So the benefits of this pose is that it promotes good health, 
stamina and agility. As we age, simple things like losing strength, vitality, coordination and agility can diminish. So the more proactive we are about um, those things or our awareness of those things, the more we have to work on them. This pose will definitely help to build your upper body strength. Components of it will definitely help to increase your core strength. And it's also a pose that will help to develop your focus, boosting your energy. Um, and you know, really, what about those things does not sound appealing. So let's dive in today. Um, and, and the reason I advocate these poses is I am 56. I am proud of my physical and mental um, outlook at this age. And I'm an advocate of those things. We need to be proactive in order to age in a healthy way. So let's go. The pose Lalasana or dangling earring is something like this. And you can see where the term dangling earring comes from. I'm not asking that you be able to do this, but I'm certainly encouraging you to play along with the little components and modifications that we can do to recreate some form of that pose. So let's start by coming down to our back. Take one of your blocks and cross your ankles. Squeeze the block. You're going to take the block on its medium level and squeeze the block in between your heels and the back of your thigh somewhere where you feel like you've got some good kind of grip of it. And then I'm going to ask you to extend your hands all the way up towards the ceiling. Flex the wrists, point the palms towards the ceiling. And then have a feeling of drawing your navel down towards your spine, really squeezing and hollowing out the navel as you lift up. So shoulders lift away from the floor. At the same time, keep the chin a little bit open looking forward and then squeeze the heels down towards the block and the block towards the back of the thighs. And here we are, if we were to flip the lens now, we're actually in this shape. We're just creating it with less um, impact or input on our arms. We're still getting the core work out here by pressing the heels together. And then you're going to slowly release down to the ground. Take a little breath, breath, uh, breath. Take a little breath and rest. And then we'll move through two more together. So as you hollow the navel down, lift the shoulders away, look forward, squeeze the block down in towards the thighs. Hold for three, two, one. Lower all the way down. And then in your own time, if you'd like to squeeze through one more, draw the knees in, draw the heels in, draw your navel down, lift up and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Hold for three. Keep retracting the shoulder, sorry, drawing the shoulders apart from one another. Two, my talking is distracting you from the core that you're feeling. One, and relax, release the block, roll all the way up, and there you go. You've done dangling earring, however, on your back. So let's keep on moving. Grab both blocks now, place them at the top of your mat. Bring your big toes together, take your knees apart. Press down into child's pose. Keep your hands elevated with your blocks. If it's comfortable for your neck, lower your head towards the floor. If you feel like you need something to support you, then grab a blanket. Place that below the forehead. 
That way you've got a little bit of support for your elbows here. And then have a feeling of firmly pressing the hands into the block so that your the middle of your shoulder lifts. And here also have a feeling of pressing the armpits down towards the ground. And release. Engage, open through the shoulders. And release. Last one, engage, open through the shoulders. This time, press all the way up to all fours or tabletop position. Walk the knees slightly back behind the line of your hips. Tuck your toes under. Rock your weight forward. Lift the knees from the ground. So we're here in plank position. And again, we're going to look at the action of the arms in dangling pose. So broaden the fingers so they're nice and wide on the blocks. And then have a feeling of pressing down firmly into the blocks as you move through the space between your shoulder blades. And I'm just going to encourage you to gently rock forwards so the weight comes slightly forward of the wrists and then backwards, pressing out through the heels. Rock the weight forwards, bringing the shoulders out over the wrists. Keep lifting through the core. Press back. Rock forwards. Keep opening space between the shoulders. Rock back. Feel free to rest at any time. We're moving through two more. Rock forward. Rest might mean child's pose. Rock back. Last one, rock forward, keep squeezing through the hands, nice and active through the shoulders, lower the knees to the ground. Let the body weight drape back and just move your, your arms to a comfortable position. Take a moment to relax. If you're feeling any tension in the wrists, then wind the wrists out, give yourself some wrist therapy. Take another two breaths here. Bring yourself back to this tabletop position. You might need to reposition the knees below or just behind the line of the hips. Tuck your toes under. We're moving through a little bit of core work with the legs and the knees now. Press back to down facing dog. Inhale, rock the weight forward just as we did in plank position. But this time you're going to draw the left knee in towards the nose and keep lifting the heel up towards the sit bone. Hold for three, keep lifting the navel and core, two, keep lifting the heel, press back, last one. Rock your weight forward, draw the shoulders out over the wrists, keep opening space between the shoulders, this time draw the right knee in towards the nose. As much as you can, keep lifting the heel up towards the sit bone. Keep connected to your breath. We're holding for three. Keep opening space in the shoulders. Two and one. Press all the way back. Take three breaths here. Inhale, rock forward to plank. We're just going to take a quick little vinyasa here. Exhale, lower the knees to the ground. Lower the hips to the ground or to the blanket roll. Readjust your blocks if you need to create space. Press the tops of your feet into the mat. Draw the shoulders back. Exhale, push back child's pose. Take about two breaths here.
and then make your way back up. We're going to set ourselves up for the propped variation of um, dangling earring pose or the lasana. So take your blanket roll, place it behind you. Set your blocks up on the medium level. Cross your ankles and draw the tops of your feet onto the blanket roll. Okay, I, help, I find for wrists or supporting the wrists here, if you have your hands propped over the very edge of the block and grip the block firmly, it, it tends to take a little bit of pressure out of the wrists. So first action here, just as we did in plank pose, have a feeling of pressing the hands firmly down into the blocks and then creating space through the middle of the shoulder blades, look forward. And then all you're doing here is just lifting one foot or one heel up towards the opposite sit bone. And lower the foot. In fact, uncross the feet. Press down firmly into the hands. Lift the other leg. Heel moves in towards the sit bone. Lower and come down. All right. This time, cross the ankles. Rock the body weight forward, grip your block, press down into the block, create space in between your shoulder blades, lift the hips. You can lift the hips by pressing the tops of the feet down into the block, keep looking forward, keep taking a breath. And here you might play around with, or with not, or without, lifting the heels towards the sit bones not happening for me and then slowly lower take a rest wherever that means for you add some wrist therapy shake the hands out and then as you're ready come to your back Again, use whatever props you have available to you here. A roll can feel nice for the nape of the neck. Draw the soles of your feet up towards the ceiling. Grab whatever part of your leg is available to you, your uh, shins, your ankles, the outer edges of your feet. And then keep pressing into the hands or into whatever contact with the leg you have so that the sacrum or lower spine is pressing down into the mat. Use your breath to soften any sticky spots or places where you feel tension. Stay here for as long as supports you or lower the feet to the ground. Lower the hands and relax the hands out to the side. If you have time available to you, you might like to take a quick Shavasana or Yogi rest just to allow you time to integrate everywhere that you've been in this session. Before leaving, take a moment to notice any sensations that your attention is drawn to right in this moment. Take a moment to notice again the quality of your breath just as you did at the beginning of practice and any change that you're aware of. Continue to lay here for as long as you need or time that you have available. Before you go, be sure to support 
um, yoga on the road and myself by subscribing to the channel. Please feel free to uh, tap the little bell so that you're reminded of our next tutorial. And also feel free to add any comments, anything that you'd like to see on this channel, anything that I can elaborate on or help you work through. I thank you for joining me from the bottom of my grateful heart. Thank you for being here. Namaste. Thank you.